Hello, I am Tom Chick. We are here in my dining room. We're about to bring a new game to the table. Uh, but first, it is April 8th, 2020. I was correctly taking a task yesterday for calling it uh, Ash Wednesday. I'm about six weeks too late for that. Uh, I just looked over here and saw that there was text on the calendar. I knew there was a Wednesday coming up. Uh, I knew there was some holy hell. Actually, the only reason I know it's Easter is because the Prime Minister of New Zealand, uh, Jacinda, Jacinda Ardern, I think is her name. You can't really say her name without sounding drunk because there's like two R's at awkward Ardern. At any rate, the New Zealand Prime Minister declared the Easter Bunny's work uh, essential services. So the Easter Bunny is exempt from any quarantine lockdown. Uh, where was it go? Oh, yeah. So at any rate, I look over here and I see, oh, it's Wednesday. It's red. Just the first holiday that popped into my mind is uh, Ash Wednesday. No, it, it's, it's Passover, Tom, you anti-Semite. So here's the deal. I should probably come clean with you guys. With these glasses on, I can see anything, you know, six feet on thereabouts. Like if I need to see something that's over six feet away, I need these glasses. However, if I need to see something that's within... At our two feet or so, I need these glasses. I'm one of those guys. So I, I have like a Goldilocks zone of between, you know, four to six feet. Otherwise, I need a different pair of glasses. So not Ash Wednesday. If you're Catholic and you're like, oh my God, don't worry. Don't worry. It's Passover. Uh, and we're, we're coming up to Easter. All right. So that's the calendar stuff. I'm here today to talk to you about deck builders because we're about to go play one that in the pantheon of deck builders, I think frankly, isn't that good. It's really, it, it's silly as I've said before. So why am I playing Marvel legendary uh, deck builder? Legendary Marvel deck builder? Whatever, I can't get the word straight. Uh, well, to explain that, let me tell you briefly about the basics of a deck builder. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tom, I know how to play deck builders. Shut up. Just bear with me. A deck builder, because it is an economic engine builder based on cycling a deck of cards one hand at a time. Okay? And you improve that economic engine by adding cards to the deck that are more valuable. That's the progression of your economic engine. Um, and you do this by using three verbs. I think there are three actions or verbs that are the foundation. They are common in, I am pretty sure, all deck builders. Uh, the, one of the basic verbs is, you know, you've got your hand of cards. One of the verbs is draw a card. Now your hand is bigger. You can do more with it. Uh, another verb is uh, remove a card from the deck. And you use this to remove less valuable cards. And then a third verb is from somewhere out there, there is a pool of better, more valuable cards. Add one of those to the deck. So, within the context of those three relatively limited verbs, uh, draw, remove, and add, deck builders have to do design work. They have to get clever. Because this stuff was invented back in 2008, I think, with Dominion. That's the grandfather of all deck builders, completely obsoleted right now. There's no reason to play Dominion. But that was the pattern that was set, and that is what all deck builders have then carried forward. Now, some of them have uh, nuanced to the verbs. They've added different verbs, different actions. For instance, take a card and then set it aside, like face up on the table. And then with later hands of cards, that's there waiting for you to use it if you want. Uh, the game Ascension had a faction called the Mechana, and a lot of them had these constructs, they were called, that would just sit up there on the table, basically extending your hand size, ready for you to use whenever, whenever you wanted. Uh, another common added verb is take a clutter card, and in Marvel Legendary it's a wound. Add it to your deck, and now it's a null card, it does nothing, it just takes up space in your hand. Super annoying. So that when you get to that action, remove a card. These clutter cards are perfect candidates for that. So here's the idea. This economic engine builder. 
uh, using a deck of cards, cycled one hand at a time. There's a ton of these games, and I want to talk about a few of them by way of explaining why I'm going to be playing Legendary Marvel Deck Builder, a frankly very silly and admittedly not um, it, it's not one of the better designs out there. There's, there's something rudimentary about it. But So let's go over to the table and I'll explain to you what the deal is, why we're playing this game. Come, come with me over here. <clears throat> Man, I wish you guys had been here. Uh, let's see. So uh, I did this great, I had a setup and everything. I did this just tremendous, impeccable, it was a perfect speech uh, about the history of deck builders and some of my favorites. I had, with the whole setup, I was pointing at things. Uh, it was awesome. Anyway, uh, I shot that, I sent the crew home. The crew left, we tore down the set, uh, called it a wrap. That's what you say at the end of the uh, day of filming. And then I went in, and then the, the uh, video went into post, as they say. And I discovered that, oh, good Lord. Oh, yep. <laughs> I discovered that I hadn't turned the mic on. So let's look at a little bit of how that looked. And I'm just going to talk over it while we're playing. Here's what you would have seen. Mm hmm. See? And then pretend, and I'm saying, and I'm making really trenchant points about deck builders, and I'm gesturing, and look, there's this deck builder and that one, and I just, uh. So at any rate, there's about, you know, 20 minutes of silent movie. Uh, yeah. Man, tech stuff, so hard. So yeah, just to, okay, I'll just sort of encapsulate. My point was, uh, all deck builders have to struggle with the question, Okay, so I've got this economic engine. Now what? What do I do with it? Generally, the solution to that, as with many board games, is, hey, go make victory points. Uh, Dominion, 2008, the founding father of the, the progenitor of deck builders. It, at a certain point, you made an economic engine, you segued over your victory points, which is a lot less fun than making an economic engine, frankly. I mean, you got to do it to win the game, but uh, at a certain point, you, you transition from economic engine to victory points. And then if the game was over, if, when the game was over, if you made more points than everyone else, you won. Uh, Ascension came along next, and it suggested, hey, you know, rather than just making you transition to victory points, I'm going to give you victory points, even for uh, just making an economic engine. And furthermore, I'm going to give you uh, fighting power, combat power, you know, little swords crossed in front of shields. What you're going to do with that? Out here, when these cards come out that you buy to build your, your deck builder economic engine, they're, they're monsters out there. And you can use your combat juice to punch them, to fight them. Furthermore, you get victory points from a different reservoir for fighting those guys, and that's the game clock as well. Uh, and as deck builders progressed, as people did clever things with them, like hitching them to race games, for instance, Clank is a very commercially, very pop, commercially successful, popular deck builder in which the players race around a dungeon and pick up treasures and uh, try to get out before a dragon attacks them. I'm not a fan of Clank. I only played the first, I played it up to when they added scuba gear, basically, which was basically them thinking, oh, we should probably maybe put some terrain in here. Uh, and I haven't played any of the Clanks since then. But my deck builder racing game of choice is a game called Quest for El Dorado, which uh, I like that a lot. Uh, that would be if we were at board gaming night and you were to say, hey, let's play Clank. I, I might try to say, oh, OK, but you know what's better than Clank is Quest for El Dorado. Can I show you guys that? Uh, so uh, that's that's another thing that deck builders have done. Deck builders have uh, married themselves to territory control. Uh, Martin Wallace's A Few Acres of Snow was, I think, an earliest example of that. And he took A Few Acres of Snow and he developed that into one of my favorite games, regardless of mechanics. 
uh, called A Study in Emerald, which brings in a ton of player psychology. Uh, one of my favorite things in board games, player psychology. Uh, and so, so over time, deck builders have developed more stuff than what Dominion had. They've given you more things to do with your economic engine, more outlets on which to express it, ways to vie against other players. Or in the case of solitaire games, you, you people call them co-op a lot. Uh, and, uh, there are other things you could do with the economic engine besides, hey, just get victory points. So. What I want to talk, well, what I did talk to you about in this excellent talk I gave earlier in the day before we called it a wrap and then I discovered later, oh, there's no audio. Uh, the reason that I am playing legendary, Mar legendary, Mar pff, whatever, the Marvel legendary deck building game. I might have even gotten that right. The reason that I'm playing that is, A, it's a solitaire game or co-op as some people call it. Uh, and B, it takes a fairly prosaic mechanic in deck builders by which uh, monsters march out of a deck and they're coming at you. They're moving across a, a row and when they get to the end, they escape or they fall off or there's some detrimental effect that accrues. Uh, Thunderstone works that way. Uh, all the legend, there's a legendary alien game that works that way. A game called Shadow Rift, Shadow Rift, yeah, which I really like. That also works that way. Shadow Rift does a cool thing too, where there's a deck of neutral cards that represents the town. And in addition to developing your deck, multiple decks if you're playing multiple hands, which you should do, you're developing the town deck as well. Uh, so that, that's a fairly pedestrian thing that, uh, uh, Xenoshift is another one. You build up these really tough space marines and while they're building up an influx of bugs and I guess they're alien bugs is attacking you. And uh, so that's a concept that deck builders use is that monsters are coming at you. Whereas in Ascension, they might randomly come out. They, they might not. You can play a round of Ascension and it's got shy monsters. You've got all this combat juice and nothing to do with it. But in, in general, games like Thunderstone, Shadow Rift, the Legendary series, uh, Xeno Shift, they'll provide you with an endless stream of monsters to fight. They make sure you get some. So Legendary Deck Builder does this, and it's nothing special. So why am I playing Marvel Legendary Deck Builder? Because what it does, I mentioned before, my whole, my whole point of mentioning the basic verbs in a deck builder was to illustrate that there's a fairly limited set of things you can do when you're building an economic engine out of cycling a deck of cards. There's the add, there's the remove, there's the draw. Marvel Legendary Deck Building Game uh, comes up with a bonkers number of, of tweaks and adjustments and, and sort of minor massaging of the different of those different verbs and they call them keywords. Now this has been around Marvel Legendary for I, I, I think 10 years, 2011. So coming up it's like a 10 year old system. Uh, and over those 10 years, of course, they've been releasing tons and tons of add-on content. And with each round of add-on content, they, they try to think up some new keywords, some new ways you can tweak those basic interactions in a deck builder. And they, they give them these um, mostly ridiculous uh, thematic justifications. Uh, I actually find it pretty endearing for how they try to represent things like Superheroes flying, or uh, superheroes having um, preternatural reaction speed, or uh, Hulk transforming, for instance. The way they use keywords and cards to express this stuff is uh, really cute. Probably not their intent to have me call it cute, but uh, that's how it comes across to me. And that's part of what I find endearing about it is they're using just the nutso bonkers world of comic books, of superheroes, which I enjoy as much as the next guy, but think for the most part that stuff is really goofy. Uh, and they, they use this superhero mythology and their keywords 
to just do nutso stuff with Marvel Legendary. But that's not the only reason that we're playing it. The main reason that I enjoy it despite the silliness, despite the fact that a lot of the other games that I've talked about are arguably stronger, more sophisticated designs, uh, is it is it is modular to a fault. Um, one of the things that you when you start a game of Marvel Legendary, and we're going to see this tomorrow, you choose a villain and you choose a scheme. Actually, we saw this yesterday on using the randomizing program on on my iPad. Uh, and that villain and that scheme determine a couple of things. The villain is the main monster that you fight. That's again something that's fairly common in a lot of deck builders. Aeon's End, uh, which I really don't care for that much, but its basic conceit is hey, here's a boss monster with a bazillion hit points. You know, punch away its hit points if you want to win. Otherwise, it's going to do things that are deleterious to you and it'll make your game hit a fail state. Sentinels of the Multiverse also works the same way, but there's just so much more charm in that game. And that's also not a deck builder that has pre built decks. Uh, so the boss monster in Marvel Legendary is your villain. They call it a mastermind, a type of villain, your uber villain. And it's a, it's a multi-staged boss that, that you fight. And the scheme that the villain has, in our case it is the <sighs> supreme intelligence of the Kree, crush with, what is it? Crush them with my bare hands. We'll see how this unfolds tomorrow. But uh, here's the boss, and this scheme is a rule set. Normally when you play a deck builder, or, or any game, the fundamentals for, hey, how do I win, are, are the same. They're very straightforward. The fundamentals for, hey, how do I win, when you play Marvel Legendary, depends on what scheme you drew. Now, uh, again, it's a 10-year-old game, so this isn't necessarily admirable. It's just the way that the business model works. Here, here's one of the schemes. In the sets that I've bought, here are the other 75. Each unique, by the way. This isn't like there's a, there are multiples and you shuffle it and draw one. Each of these, and this is in alphabetical order because I use a randomizer to determine what scheme, and then I go through and I find it. There are in my set of Marvel Legendary Deck Builder cards, 76 different schemes or different rule sets that determine the structure of the game and how you win. Some things are always the same. You always have villains that come out. And sometimes, by the way, you don't even care if they're coming out and moving across the board. Sometimes you've got bigger fish to fry, other things to do. Uh, and in a way, they're a resource. You kind of farm these villains because they can give you beneficial effects when you defeat them. But mainly, you're worried about whatever scheme you drew. And in the context of that, beating up this boss. Actually, basically what it is, you always have to beat the boss. The scheme is, the, is an extra set of rules in a fail state. So it's not necessarily, how do I win? It's, how do I not lose? Right? Uh, so this extreme modularity, so the combo of the villain and the scheme is the combinatorials there are just bonkers. They're ridiculous. It's insane. And then add to it the modularity of the different heroes. Each hero is a set of cards. And when you play Marvel Legendary Deck Builder, you choose five heroes, or the randomizer chooses for you. You shuffle all those cards together, and those are the resources you bring to bear as you're playing a deck builder to defeat the villain and prevent his scheme from executing and, and you losing the game. So five heroes, one villain, one scheme, who knows what's going to happen. And th th there is no sense, by the way, of tuning or, 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 or balance or fairness here. You could get a scheme and a villain that is uh, maybe almost impossible. Uh, certainly, if you randomize heroes, you can get a situation that it, you probably are just never going to win. Or you can get a situation where you sit down to play. Here's this villain. Here's this scheme. Here are these five heroes. That villain and that scheme, oh, that was easy. That was no challenge whatsoever. Generally, it's going to be somewhere in between those two extremes. Uh, you can also, by the way, 
challenge yourself with a really difficult combo of villain and scheme and play it like a puzzle. Like which five heroes can I combine to solve this, this, this puzzle? So that modularity, that extreme modularity, that, that, that who knows what you're gonna get, like that, that's just bonkers. I enjoy the bonkers element, but it reminds me of a game that I really like and I will definitely be showing you guys at some point. Uh, the folks who make a game called the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Here's a game they did, let me make sure it's no clear. Yeah, you guys can see Apocrypha, which is whatever. This is artwork. There's a claw and there's a word. Uh, it uses this idea of a modular rule set to, I think, great effect. Uh, when you play Apocrypha, the different scenarios build the rule set out of different modules that that make different scenarios feel very, very, very different. Uh, and I like that a lot about that. And Marvel Ultimate, no, Marvel Legendary Card Builder, Deck Builder, uh, gets at that a little bit. Not quite the same design chops that Apocrypha has. It's more of just, hey, throw everything at the wall and see what sticks goofiness. But I'm ready for some goofiness. I'm ready for a little silliness. Uh, Things are pretty dire, and while they're dire, let's take a break and do something silly. Starting tomorrow, by fighting the supreme intelligence of the Kree, which is trying to crush them with his bare hands, her, his, it's a computer. How does it, it doesn't even have hands. We'll, let's, we'll see how that works tomorrow. Who's gonna stop the supreme intelligence of the Kree? Well, glad you asked. Ms. America, Groot, Valkyrie, uh, somebody named Maximus, and Black Panther. Uh, so let's do that tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching. This has been take two of today's dining room table video. Uh, take care. Let's go have some silliness tomorrow, and I'll see you guys then. Cheers. Oh, shoot a monkey.